Uh, good morning, everybody. It's Peter here from AJS, and it's my delight this morning to welcome Aaron Mikolev. Uh, hi, Aaron. How are you? Hi. Well, thank you. Good morning. So I'm really excited about this morning's presentation because uh, Aaron is going to be sharing with us uh, a bit of glass engraving, and uh, it's going to be very exciting, Aaron. Actually, um, we've got some items that you've prepared earlier, so we might just give people a bit of an idea of the sort of stuff you can do. Okay, so uh, all right, so they were vessels. So that, there was some exhibition work I did a few years ago. Um, some of the first glass engraving on on the larger scale. So those those guys are about um, about twenty to thirty centimeters tall, um, and engraved with the diamond tools in the same process as um, I'll show you today. I could even do a little demo of some of the barbed wire if anyone's particularly interested in that. Um, yeah, amazing. And uh, and this beautiful. is another. Look, this is a. Yeah, tum a tumbler, um, a bit of a, uh, works out to be an expensive tumbler. There's a fair bit of work involved in those ones, but that's that's just a pear bud. Um, so I grew up on an orchard and um, had photographs of pear twigs silhouetted, um, and that's reproduced on the glass there, again with the diamonds. It's magnificent. Thank you. And here's a whole set. This is the set. So this is so my my day job is in chemistry. So I'm I'm actually a, uh, a research chemist, and these are molecules. And if I'm looking at these ones, these are all flavor molecules from whiskey. So different um, molecules in whiskey that give you know some give the smoky flavor, some of the you know the peaty kind of flavor. Uh, vanillin is in there, um, and so uh, and they're really neat to do because you can essentially it's very geometric it's balls and and. Um, ball cuts and lines so very readily done with um, with the diamond burrs ah, so every one of those patterns is a distinct formula is that correct yeah yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's exactly right yeah, yeah exactly and, right um, and again so this this is again the pear bud motif but um, scaled up onto a onto a vessel again probably about 25 centimeters tall um, that was a blue um, vessel that we um, blew um, so that was that was blown. I did glass blowing as well. So that was blown from scratch, um, oh. engraved, and then and then it's sandblasted to give it the frosted look, and then polished back to sort of um, give it a nicer satin finish. So a lot of surface work, um, sort of value adds the original vessel, I guess. Yeah, that's uh, magnificent. And here's another one. Yeah, and that's uh, and that's a pear flowers actually. So um, so. Uh, yeah, again, all done. And this was all done with um, that we'll be demonstrating today. Um, a larger design took a lot longer. Um, and what you can see, there's a real three-dimensional nature, which comes from cutting deeply into the, into the glass. And you get that real three-dimensional look as opposed to just drawing on the glass. Yeah, it does look quite deep. Yeah, you can, see, yeah, yeah. You can really see the texture. Mm. Yeah. Excellent. So, well, thank you for sharing that. We'll give people a bit of an idea of uh, what we're up to. Yeah, yeah. So, you're welcome. Um, yeah. So, th there's. I don't think we got there, but this this is a, this is a one of the vessels in the in the flesh, um, and oh yeah, you can see that. So, one of the vessels in the flesh, and again, um, and this is cut two twice basically. So, the larger, deeper cuts are performed with a an engraving wheel um, which is more glass cutting sort of akin to traditional like crystal cutting um, to do the bulk of the cutting and then I do the finishing and the final work and the polishing again all by hand with the with micromotor and diamond burrs and then polishing burrs yeah uh, excellent so, thank you so you're going to take us through a few little projects this morning yeah I will I'll do I'll do some little projects um I'm I'm not going to make any assumptions about how familiar people are with the equipment that we're using. So I'll do a little bit of an introduction to, um, because people can do this at home and you don't need super sophisticated equipment to do this. So um, I will go through a little bit through the equipment um, that I use and um, some of the considerations in just setting up and cutting glass. And then, then I'll move into a couple of um, little projects. We'll start with some simple things and move up to, to doing a, Towards the end, we'll be working towards a dragonfly on a on a tumbler. So that'll be that'll be sort of the the end project, I guess. Well, everyone uh, loves their dragonflies, so uh, stay tuned, everybody. Yeah, yeah, hang around for the dragonfly. 
Um, okay, so I've got my little my little setup here. Um, what's always important is having good lighting and um, cutting glass always works better if I've got some light coming towards me. Um, I will be engraving with a micromotor. So there's the handpiece. Um, and this, this came from AJS. Um, this is a uh, really nice piece of equipment, actually. The micromotor. I'll bring this. So there's a control box um, I'll bring around, which gives me access to speed control. Um, on and off, uh, forward and reverse. So sometimes when you're cutting, especially with glass, it's probably true of other materials, um, the, the cut, the stroke of the cut, I guess, um, can feel very different depending on whether you've got the, the thing turning one way or the other. Um, I've realized that of course I'm, I'm left-handed, so my left hand's probably gonna be in the way a lot. Um, so of course I'm probably using the opposite rotation to what other people might use. Um, and this is, this is also fitted with a, you can't see it because it's under the table, um, but I've got a, a foot a pedal controller, which gives me um, speed control um, and, and you know, essentially on and off and, and speed control. Um, this will spin up to 45,000 um, RPM, which is kind of pushing the limits for the, the smaller diamond burrs it's fine for. I don't, I don't go that high. Um, but the beauty of it, having that speed control means that I can, if I'm using... Um, softer cutting materials um, like uh, cans of stone or polishing pins, rubber polishing pins, for example, I can turn the speed right down at, you know, as, as appropriate. Um, I'll probably work, work in about that 30,000-ish range for the diamond burrs, depending on, um, depending on exactly which one it is. Um, so in the, in the handpiece, uh, the beauty of this guy is that it clicks, clicks open the collet clicks open, um, I can just lock it again and quickly change change burrs. Um, I have my little selection in a tin with in some in some foam. Um, and I've got them categorized as to as to especially the balls. Um, I work a lot with with the ball burrs all, all categorized according to, to size. Um, and of course different sizes and profiles will give you dif different cutting shapes. Um, I've collected some of those over time. But um, there's also simpler, simpler sets you can, you can also get. Um, and they are you know, quite readily available, again, from AJS, inexpensive. And they give you an opportunity to just experiment with some, with some um, different profiles, I guess. Um, and they come with different diamond bursts, come with different um, diamond size. So the diamonds can give you a rougher cut or a finer cut. Uh, so that's something you might um, look at if you're given the option. And um, yeah, I think that that kind of kind of covers a lot of that. Or they can also be sintered or coated. So there's different um, price ranges, of course, too. Whether the, the diamonds go all the way through the material or this on the surface, um, I use just the, the coated ones a lot of the time. Right, so and just to explain for our viewers, uh, Aaron, that we've got uh, for their viewing pleasure, we've got a camera set up to give them a bird's eye view of what you're getting up to. That's exactly exactly right. So um, that's that's the so I've got the camera set up right in front of me. Um, there we go. That's so this little guy here is the tip of a essentially a syringe and I've got that you can't see the plumbing but I've got a very sophisticated setup that goes up to a soft drink bottle and um with water in it and a little a little tap that just comes from some trickle irrigation that lets me turn on the the dripper um because I'm cutting glass I don't want to be breathing glass dust and I don't want to wear out my diamond the diamond will of course get quite warm as um as I cut so using the water um as lubrication uh, it makes my diamond burrs last longer it also cuts down all the glass, all the glass dust. So essentially, I don't have I don't have dust flying around. Everything sticks down to the surface down here, and I can clean it up nice and safely later on. Um, yeah, so that's that's my little dripper. I've got my drip feed going now. Um, I will zoom in and out. If anyone, if I get carried away and you can't see what I'm doing on the camera, just please yell at me, and I'll change the change the view. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, all right, what will we start with? Um, I'm, I'm going to work on a few different blanks today. Um, I can do 
Um, tumblers is what I do a lot of. I make a lot of sort of um, sort of practical wear, I guess, as well as the the larger exhibition work. Um, and the, the tumblers don't don't take too long. The, the designs on those. Um, also, we work a bit with on flat glass. So um, some of the things that I'll maybe one of the simpler demos to begin with is I'll work with these little these are pre-cut um, little bauble shapes, I guess. So for Christmas decorations or just you know window decorations, um, I've had these uh, from just literally normal. Um, window glass you can, you can use, um, had these water jet cut, so in, in large numbers to make it economical and the, the hole gets cut through. You can drill your own hole through, hole through glass with um, diamond bits or um, diamond core drills, um, but the water jet cutter does it brilliantly and saves me a whole lot of grief, so I let them do it. Um, and what I'm going to do is show you some, you can see these decorations, see the designs on these. A very Just simple. Under the, uh, mobile, yeah, we'll go. We'll go the. Um, there we go. So that's a, that's the kind of little designs. They're nice and simple. Um, just and just line work. So I'm going to show. Just do a little quick demo of one of these. You can see the water's getting in the way, dripping on there. But um, what you'll also notice, like on this design, for example, is that the the stems of these little weedy plants. Uh, kind of picking up the light really nicely. And then there's little um, ball cuts on, on top, um, which don't. Um, and what I've done there is just used a really simple product. Um, it's just a rub and, a rub and buff product. Um, that one's leaked, but you can just buy this from loads of places, Spotlight, for example, and just literally rub it onto the, the glass wherever there's a rough cut bit, it sticks and then you, you polish it off the smooth glass. And then if, depending on how you control the order of your cutting, you obviously can have some bits that are highlighted and some bits aren't, which makes, you know, gives you a bit of, um, bit of interest in the, in the design. Now we can set these up on the glass a few different ways. Um, when you, you're putting, laying down your design on the glass, um, one of my best friends is the Sharpie. It's, it's good. Um, clean the glass first. That's important. If it's greasy, you'll put, as soon as you start working with the water, your design washes away, which is really frustrating if you spend a lot of the time setting up a fancy design. Um, so clean the glass first. A Sharpie is great. Um, Posca pens, are just from office works, are fantastic. Um, or you can get um, also, um, these were sort of a wax pencil. We call them China graph pencils. Used to use them in the lab. Um, again, Lumi Color, they're just a, a product you can again get from Officeworks. They're great for work, working on the glass and laying down a design. But I'm gonna do something even simpler here. Um, Pre-made designs and laminated so they're waterproof. So um, I'm gonna lay that down there. And the beauty of this one is that I can use it hundreds of times and it, and it doesn't, um, I don't lose it. No. All right. It's, so I'm just going to line that up. So I make sure the, the hole in my little bauble is out of the way. And um, I'm going to cut this. So I'm changing, I'm going to change the burr in my um, engraver here to uh, probably about a two millimeter ball burr, which I find is really, really good for just simple line work. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's really sort of nice general size for doing, doing line work. So I'll start this up um, and we will go. So burrs loaded, um, there's the engraver going. I've got water on there. This is a nice coating of water. So this is nice and safe. Um, and we'll have, you'll see the water spraying. So I can just cut. And once I've started, it doesn't matter if I go a little bit off the template, I can just make it up as I go. And you see there the water's clouding up as the glass cuts. So uh, there we go. You can see the first part of the cut there. All 
I'll just do a few of these. We won't spend ages on this to demonstrate the point. And I'm not using a lot of pressure here. Um, I'm just letting the diamond do its work. Being nice and steady with the cut. No, that's working okay there. Do a longer one. And you can also be thoughtful about how you overlap lines. You can literally go over the top or bypass. There's a, there's a bit of a start on that. I think that sort of shows you what's going on there. So you can see how very quickly you can create your piece of art. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't take too long at all. Um, and I'm not, I'm not kind of ideally positioned and lit here, but so I'm a bit, I'm going a bit off template, but that, um, you can see how that works quite nicely. And then I'll move to a, um, what do we go to? Say a three, three millimeter ball. And we'll do the, um, the heads on those, those um those weedy flowers the seed heads i guess we'll call them um all right there we go and i'm also going to go in a bit closer because we can yeah it's a great view aaron i'm sure everyone's enjoying it <laughs> it works it works well i just discovered the, i can zoom on my camera on the phone yeah. uh, who would have thought Okay, here we go. All right, so this is a nice, this is a pretty new bird. So I haven't worn out too many diamonds and it cuts quite nicely. Sometimes you might have to encourage it a little bit with a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of motion, circular motion sort of helps you center the cut and just get it started and, um, and off you go. Yeah, so you can see that um, you can very quickly build up build up patterns on on these, um, and you know you can see they're zoomed in. Those lines aren't super tight, but you can obviously go over them again, smooth things, smooth out the features, um, and you're well on the way to having a little Christmas decoration. Um, and we can um, personalize these. So um, personalizing involves text usually. Um, the, a, a nice, a nice burr to use for doing text is a, um, an inverted cone. So, um, so it's got the wide end of the cone at the end and it sort of narrows down towards the, the shaft. Um, and they give you a sort of a, a calligraphy kind of effect. This one's a kind of a short. Um, version. We go back to the to the zoomed version. I'll yeah. give it a go. Here we go. All right. Um, so you can see. There we go. So this is a bit of a short, stubby cone, but it's got the right kind of shape. Um, I'm, and I'm no calligrapher, so I apologise for this. But um, here we go. So you can see that. Beautiful. <laughs> when do I come around to pick it up, Aaron? Uh, yeah, Christmas time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you can come, you can come out. Yeah, you'll, 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 you're nearby. Um, so that was that was a that was a um, that was quite a nice one. The um, the 
the diamond, yeah, they, so they work well. They let you, let you personalize things. What I've got hiding down here, um, so that those, these burrs are a, a, um, a um, shaft size that fits the, the micromotor. Um, and they're lovely, but you can get more sophisticated dental burrs, of course. So, of course, um, so we might be familiar with diamond cutting from going to the dentist and getting a, getting a cavity, um, cavity drilled out. Um, so dental burrs are available and they're often a, a sort of a high quality piece of diamond too. So this one's, this is inverted cone in a dental burr. And if we compare the size of that to the, to the original, you can see there's a difference and you can possibly also see, depending on your monitor, that the diamonds are a lot finer. So it's, there, it's a much finer little piece of kit, but it's also a finer burr. So on its own, uh, if I can... Oh, I can't unscrew it. I did it up too tight. But on its own, there's there's some other ones. You can see they're they're very small. Um, they have disappeared. There they are. So they're small. Um, so there's a little adapter that we use to to um, to bring them up for um, convert them for use directly in the micromotor. And this way, I don't have to change any collets. So there are other collets available often for micromotors. Um, as there are, it's a, essentially a glorified Dremel. You could be doing this with a Dremel, in fact. Um, but this um, this lets me use the diamond bits from the dental burrs in the um, in my micromotor. And we'll see if I do this one again, or we'll get some hopefully some finer finer calligraphy here. There we go. So that's that's a finer a finer cut, um, and again, just sort of demonstrates that these dental burrs um, are really nice to use. Um, in, you need a little adapter, but they're they're a great tool as well. Um, so you call that a repeat? Is that right? A uh, sorry? A repeat? Because you did Peter twice. I did. <laughs> a repeat. I love that. That's excellent. It's <laughs> a dad joke, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that was excellent. Uh, yes, there you go. There's the repeat. Um, all right. So, um, so that's that's demonstrated one of those. I'm going to um, cut a little bit differently now. I think I'll just just sort of show you. So that was that was they were quite surface cut e and and um, we were, I wasn't cutting deep. So um, so that doesn't have that sort of same three dimensional nature of the cuts as what I saw we see in some of the, the sort of more sculptural pieces I do. Um, this is a, this is actually a prototype for, um, for an award, a medal, which had a Jacaranda um, kind of uh, profile on it. And I just want to sort of maybe show quickly how we can, we can cut deeply I'll do an extra leaf or so. Um, and going back again to a ball burr, um, the, these are just built up. I'm going to build up a, a leaf here. A leaf in the middle. So I'll just start off with my simple cut and start cutting in, bringing the shape together. And so that's that's kind of created my shape. Um, it's a little bit hard to, to see in the video, but it's it's kind of a bit flat and also um, somewhat rough as well. So if I, I wanted to, um, if I wanted to sort of polish that up, I'd end up with sort of um, polished ridges and rough troughs. So to smooth that out, I'd just go to essentially a bigger, a larger burr, and um, and sort of just smooth it out a bit more just sort of try to make it more like a consistent cut uh, 
Okay, so that's that's kind of tidied it up a bit. And then I can move through to a finer burr. Let's go down to a one and a half millimeter ball. Uh, and you can see I like the ball burrs. They sort of give me a lot of, that's a lot of versatility. Um, and this is, a, and I'm just gonna basically do the, do the tidying up, the pointing at the, at the end essentially. Just a bit of tidying and up around the edges. And, and there you go, there's an extra, an extra little bit of leaf added, added to that. Um, it's hard to demonstrate how deep that is, but that's, that's, that's um, it's got a fair bit of, you know, maybe the light will catch it at the right angle, but there's a fair bit of depth to those cuts. As you can see, you can see that there, they're, um, they're quite deep. Um, the beauty of that gives you is that it gives you that real three dimensional nature. Um, and it, it means you can kind of get a 3D effect without having to, um, without having to resort to shading. So um, in a, maybe in a future workshop, I might do a demonstration where I do a more sort of illustrative work, illustrative work and, um, and we can work with the diamonds and then polish back to create shading. And again, the three-dimensional sort of adds more to the three-dimensionality, partly from the depth of your cuts and partly from the, um, from the shading effects. Um, right, now another little demonstration. This is a this is partly a demonstration on how to get pattern onto the glass. So I've got a little a little owl. I'm going to do quickly. So I found a very cute little owl um, on a key ring, and I figured this would make a really nice design for a, a Christmas bauble. Um, other nice blanks to use are um, glass coasters, and again, this is just well essentially thick window glass that we've, we've had cut up and, um, and we arrest the edges to make it nice and nice to work with. Um, so little owl, it's gonna end up on the bauble. Um, I could have drawn this directly on here, but um, let's assume I, well, let's go with the fact that I didn't. Um, I just wanna demonstrate how to, how to transfer, um, how to get this transfer happening. I will zoom uh, back the other way out here right so i've got my drawing um, one of the techniques is to use is the uh good old the china graph pencil so once i've done my tracing um i can hopefully i don't get everything too wet basically just go over the the, the line work with the pencil the, the china graph and i just need basically enough to transfer the design. I need to be able to transfer these eyes to the glass. Right, so there we go. So that's done. I flip the design over so the um, pencil's on the back, put it on my piece of glass. And now I'm just gonna trace it. This is just a, 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 a not very good old ballpoint pen. So I'll just go over the design. Oops, got too close there. And the beauty of this, and I don't have to be too neat because I can tidy this up as I go. I've had multiple stages of drawing this. One line there, line there, line there. and little wings. All right, so that was pretty rough. And <laughs> after all that, it did absolutely nothing because I got the glass wet. Oh, no. <laughs> but that's how you do it. Um, what I will do instead is, um, I'll just put it underneath. And I'm just going to draw it up instead. Um, again, I'm going to start with a small ball burr, ball burr, and um, we will zoom in a bit. I kind of know what I'm doing. I've drawn this out a couple of times this morning, so we'll we'll just go with it. All right.
Yeah, that's enough. I'll get rid of the get rid of the template. Put that down there on the floor. And it makes it a bit easier for me to see. Um, I will. What do I do? I'll do the eyes. Eyes always give me um, a nice bit of focus. So I'll do the pupils of the eyes. And this is the five millimeter ball burr, which is kind of one of the larger ones that you can you can actually get without going to a bit of trouble. I'm just sort of circulating here because that lets me actually make this bigger than what it would otherwise be. You kind of start the start the cut and you feel your way around the around the edges and um, And then we have the pupils for the eyes. Uh, I will transfer now to a, a cylindrical burr. So this is a different shape we haven't used yet. Um, I might go with a largish one. So again, this is about the profiles that you can potentially get from a uh, the different birds. So I'm going to try and do the, the beat with this. So I'm going to cut in at, at an angle. So hopefully I'll get sort of a, a straight cut edge, but it will be, um, it'll sort of angle outwards into the center of what I want the beat to be there. Um, just thinking of always the profile that I'm, that I'm getting out of this. Back in the angle, right? So that's building up the beat. Um, I think I'll let you use your imagination. What I would have gone on to do here is do the line work with this guy, and um, and again the shape of the the shape of the cut would have helped give me some sort of feather um, effect on the body. Um, and yeah, again a very simple little gift, um, something lovely for you know, someone important in your in your life. Um, but yeah. What I will move on to now is is the the dragonfly. Um, in the interest of time, uh, the uh, I do a lot of insects. I do I, I have um, I have a, a series of, of tumblers that I do with insects. Um, bull ants uh, have t was something I did for an exhibition. Proved to be very popular, and um, so I do bull ants. Um, I do native bees. Um, and I find that insects are really nice to do with the, with the diamond burrs because um, when you not literally dismantle an insect, but when you look at drawing it and um, pull it back to its sort of fundamental shapes, they're very geometrical. So made up of circles, um, lines, uh, and it's, so they're kind of quite good to reproduce with the um, with the, the diamond burrs. So what I'm going to work with is um, a tumbler. So this is um, not the world's most elaborate tumbler. It's a pretty simple one. Um, there's a dragonfly design that I've literally just printed out onto normal paper. And I've used a couple of pieces of tape just to hold it inside there. Um, I could also have taped off the top to stop water getting inside if I wanted to keep it in there. Inevitably, as I'm working here, this will end up getting wet. Um, um, in the interest of speed, I'm just sort of going to not worry about that it's, it's, and in fact what i'll do is i'm just going to mark out the um the basics of the design and then go back in and um and do it up properly so i will go back to 
one of my trusty bits, maybe not one, this one. This is a so how many um, different burrs do you anticipate using on this design? On this, in this one, um, I, <laughs> I actually will probably use maybe um, a sort of a, the larger um, burr for the, the eyes, you know, the eyes might make it. Um, larger burr for the eyes, um, a fine, um, a finer ball burr for the segments of the body, mm -hmm. uh, maybe two different, uh, yeah, probably, yeah, probably a medium kind of one, um, maybe about a two millimeter one, and then down to maybe a one millimeter burr just for some of the, the antennas and tidying up some aspects of the detail in the, in the tail. Um, the wings, I will actually do the, do the vein work in the wings with a, like a rat's tail or a, or a sort of a long conical kind of, kind of burr, which just sort of, sort of goes to a fine point uh, for doing the really fine lines. Um, and that, that kind of covers it. So you, you don't need a huge range of, of, of burrs really to, to put these things together. So, um, I'll talk my way through it as I as I go, um, but first I'm just going to lay it, lay it out lay out the design. One of the most tricky bits actually with these things and where I should be starting is getting the um, getting the wings correct and in proportion. So I'm actually uh, let me start with a really fine ball for the wings. So this is about a under a millimeter, very fine ball. I'll do the outline of the wings with that. Um, well, we've got a great view, Aaron. So okay, that's good. So hopefully, I won't mess it up. All right. <laughs> this is just we'll just wet that glass. Okay. Okay, so that's got my wings outlined. Um, just checking that I can actually actually see that. Um, that's got the wings outlined. So that's a, that's with these things the kind of most important bit. Like I haven't done the super um, super duper careful job there um, in the interest of time, but that will do nicely for what I need. I'm going to just go up to a kind of a yeah one and a half millimeter ball just to basically mark in other parts of the design now. And yes, right. Okay, so I'm gonna just center the eyes. So I've done, I've actually done very little of anything there, to tell you the truth. It's just enough to provide markers for when I go back and do, do the rest of it. Um, and in fact, it's actually hard for me to see this. So I'm going to take the template out of this now. Um, it just kind of destroyed it. But it's given me enough, enough markers that I can go back and start doing the, the real thing. So, um, I'm gonna take the burr up to a um, 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 probably 2.1 millimeter burr, and I'm just going to sorry. there it is. Sorry. Finding my reference drawing because my <laughs> Helpful to have a bigger reference drawing. Right, okay, here we go. So there's a... If 
I'm building up the, um, the, the sort of the segmented part of the body between the wings. Um, and each one of these, rather than drawing it, I'm sort of cutting, cutting it so that it, it again gives it that three dimensional nature. Go up to a slightly bigger burr. And you can see swapping these things in and out is really quite quite fast. So I decided after all that that actually I could work a bit bigger. But having mark those in, it's it's a, it's an easy step now to just upgrade. So this is the um, sort of the main uh, body. Yeah, so I've kind of just drawn that in. I'll go back with it with a um, a larger burr soon and um, and tidy that up. And all right, now the tail is kind of segmented. So I'm going to do each segment bit by bit. And they kind of are linear and they flare out at the bottom. And you can make this simpler as well. You can just do this as a line and then sort of draw some detail over the top of it. So that's starting to come together. And now I'm going to do around the head. So around the head, there's a couple of sort of at the back of the head, there's a, there's a behind the eyes. In this section here, this could be very boring, just a single cut, but I find that I make it into out of sort of three teardrop shapes, it works quite nicely. So two teardrop shapes on the edges. Starts as a, as a round cut, and then I just pull it upwards, sort of make the teardrop uh, one over here. And then, um, Oh, it's not coming together. It's looking a little bit lopsided. I'm not. There we go. Okay, and putting some eyes. Um, a little bit off target, but that's okay.
There's the eyes. Come on. And in front of the eyes is a little nosy bit. Can you just get that down a little bit, uh, Aaron? Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's great. Right. Thank you. There we go. All right, so that's that's kind of coming coming together. It's a little bit a little bit wonky, but um, that so that's all been essentially ball burr so far. I'd go back to um, the very fine one, just for now some of the detail. So um, little antennae bit, not really antennas, but they're. Um, and something, so about a one millimeter ball. Again, I'd go back normally and tidy up, you know, tidy up parts of the tail, just to sort of, just to sort of finesse these shapes a little bit. Back to a three millimeter ball. I'll add some depth to this body. And I think it'd be nice for it to have some legs. So Aaron, just before you start that, you can see that it's a, a constant process. You start with your outline and it's just a constant refining process. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is a constant refining process. Um, and then um, and then even once it's cut, then, um, you know, potentially polishing back. So, um, yeah, it's basically about about right. So the, the, the little um, cylinder um, bits, those are really good for the legs. So I can sort of ang angle them a little bit like color calligraphy to sort of get the finer and um, thicker parts. Yep. Um, Just my aim's a bit off. Of, um, the camera's kind of getting in in the way of my view a little bit, but it's um, you can see how it's coming coming together there. Yeah. Um, and then um, finishing off the wings is the is the very lengthy part of the process. And I'm just going to use like a, a sort of pointy. This isn't quite a rat's tail, but it's a long cone. But one with a really fine end on it, basically, you sort of only need a diamond or so's worth at the end. And basically, I'd just be adding the sort of the vein work to the to the wings. And then this would just be very Time consuming, just basically putting the cells of the vein work onto the wing. Um, and you can imagine how that proceeds. It takes quite, quite a while. Um, I use a slightly different approach. So that, that works really well. Um, I use a slightly different approach on this other one. Um, there's one we can go back to the, can we go back to the other view? Yeah. So there's, there's one I've done earlier. And with this one, I, I instead of drawing in all the, the veins, I actually, they're all little, um, cups with the ball burr. So I basically, um, that, that kind of effect, you can't really see it in three dimensions so well here, but that's like a, there you go, if I wet it, maybe you can. Um, gives like a, what we call a batuto effect, like that beaten metal effect, um, which is quite, quite effective on glass at a larger scale. So I've used the small ball burrs here to sort of just do lots and lots of cuts to give a texture uh, without actually sort of specifically drawing in each little 
little um, cell um, on the on the wing of the the dragonfly. But that sort of um, that sort of brings it together, and you can see there with the you know a, a, a few more minutes of, of finessing um, that would would come together really quite nicely. And seeing it at this magnification, you do see kind of all the all the nitty gritty of it. Um, but when you you know I, you get pedantic about it, but I do anyway. But you know you bring it up to to real size and and all that sort of detail you know the, the sort of all comes together and gives you your, your design yeah um, you can get too close to the mona lisa can't you you know yeah, exactly. stand back. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yes um yeah so that's 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 kind of I, I guess i can kind of um is there anything specifically any any questions yeah, so we've got some uh, nice uh, thumbs up and loves hearts for you aaron but oh, uh, lynn has asked uh what is your dripping system made up of? Um, it's, um, it is a, I can actually probably get it down. All right. It's a very sophisticated soft drink bottle. Um, and I found, <laughs> I found this on a, um, one of those hydration sacks that, you know, for hiking. And what, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, a, like a sack thing. And it had this, uh, attachment which came out and happened to perfectly fit the soft drink bottle which was great uh, and then and then this is just um well i've got some different types of hose on there there's um pvc hose um but the the very best stuff to use is what i use at the end here this is if you can get your hands on some silicon hosing which is what they use uh, medically um you know you get, okay that, that's that's it's really soft very flexible and this at the end is actually just a a um a a, a, essentially a neat um a syringe that i've just chopped up um and and in, and in between is 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 a um that's a little tap off a that i found in the garden literally um from an old um automatic irrigation system just a little little on off tap but just something look that's 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 complicated you could put a little clamp on there you could do all kinds of things, or you could just let the water run um, and restrict it some other way, just so um, you can control the, the dripping. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's it's very homemade. I did have a beer keg at one point in time up there, but um, like a home brew keg with a little tap on it. Okay, yeah, um, that works as well. Yeah, <laughs> thirty liters. That wasn't dripping onto the time. glass. That was dripping into your schooner glass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that answered that that question yeah no thank you if there's any other questions please uh put forward um and or comments even that'd be lovely uh, so uh, you've probably proven a lot of people have a lot of this stuff at home already that they're using in other pursuits and they could use it to engrave some glass as well yeah that's exactly right so um I mean, realistically, at the end of the day, you know, the micromoto is micromotor is a, a, you know, a glorified Dremel. So lots of people will have a, a Dremel type of setup at home. Um, and again, um, these these burrs are all perfectly compatible with the with the Dremel. The reason I don't, and I, I, I do use it sometimes. It's in the background, um, but it's it's just it's as heavier. Um, if you get them with the the um, the extension. Um, you can have the motor up there, which keeps the electricity away from the water, which is always very good. And it's a major, major consideration of how I set up is keeping the electricity and the water separated. Um, and yeah, so if you have the, um, oh, I can't remember what the proper term is, but the little extension with the handpiece for the Dremel, you can hang the Dremel up there and just have the handpiece down there. And that's a lot, um, a lot easier on your hand as well. Um, yeah, it just gives you that extra bit of control. Yeah, and the diamond burrs are not um, not ridiculously expensive. Um, the majority of these again came from AJS. This little, um, you know, this little set, um, which has a variety of different shapes. There's balls in there and cylinders. Um, is is that is very affordable, and that's a really great, um, a really great setup for just practicing. Um, you know, practicing what kind of line work um, and cuts you get out of different shaped burrs. So um, good place to start. 
Now, Aaron, thank you so much for the uh, introduction there you've given us. And I'm sure that's inspired a number of people, both now and in the future, to give a bit of glass engraving a go. Yeah. And, uh, well. and I mean, you can have a template, but you don't have to stick to it. You can uh, deviate and no one's going to know the difference, are they? Yeah. No, well, that's, that's exactly right. And in fact, when I matched up some of the, book, the, dec some of the decorations with the templates, it turned out they were completely different. So we must have... <laughs> Must have in the past has gone and gone. Once you've done the design a few times, you, it's like my ball ants. I just sort of just do them straight off the top of my head now. You, you do yeah, you get a formula. Yeah. yeah, and you can um and you don't need if you're just doing especially surface work, um, you don't need a you know something like a two millimeter um ball. I've got a, an old one here that I use just for my outline work all the time. It doesn't cut very deep, just enough for my outlining. And um there's plenty of artists that do hatching work with that kind of thing and just will, will decorate huge vessels um, just off, you know, offhand kind of thing. So, um, yeah, you don't need super sophisticated gear by any means. Yes. Excellent. Well, we'll uh, wrap it up there, Aaron, but we'll look forward to having you back in the future to display thank more you. of your uh, handiwork. And right. uh, thank you those for watching uh, both now and in the future. We'll see you again soon, Aaron. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.